How are you doing YouTube? It's your friendly gamer, Smart and today here. Welcome to a new series I'm doing. It's called How I Play. Now, before I go on further, I just want to show you guys matchmaking, stay to solo. So today's episode is going to be on the new Spy 2.0. So we're going to do a Corpus mission as well as a Gwinear type mission. Now, in the past, I've had a lot of people suggesting I should do some Twitter, not Twitter, uh, Twitch streaming. Now, at this time, I don't plan to do that anytime soon, but I do want to show off a bit of gameplay in general as opposed to just tutorial builds and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to do Spy 2.0 today because ever since I uploaded my Breeding Grounds Crowded Moss Return video, I've had quite a few people messaging me in-game asking, you know, what's the best way of running these missions, what's the fastest way of running these missions, and that's pretty much what I'm going to try to show in this video. Now, I know at least one of you in chat after this video will say, you know, there are other ways of doing this a bit faster, there's other ways of doing this a bit safer, but this is basically the way I found to be most effective. I've done about 10-20 missions now, and the missions I'm going to show you guys are pretty much 100% guaranteed, and I feel they're pretty fast. Now, you might have noticed in the initial part of the video, I set the matchmaking to solo. That is extremely important. So we got first vote over here, and let's get down to it. So you got Eximus there, you need to kill that, you got another enemy here, you gotta kill that. You need to wait for these doors to go off, and then you can proceed. You got one console over here, after this console a door will open, and you can enter the final room, where you will unlock the final console for the data for this vault. So that's open, and we can open this one. So that's number one, it's pretty easy. Main thing to watch out for is you do want to use something like Loki for these kind of missions because if these cameras catch you while you're not invisible, that will set off the alarm. Now this particular vote actually is pretty easy because even if you do set off the alarm in the initial stages, you can still actually get it because you only need to activate two consoles, i.e. one console and one for the data release. So like I was saying, you know, you may have found better ways of doing this, but basically the way I'm showing here is pretty much guaranteed 100% success, and I feel it's extremely fast, and you know, there's not that many faster ways of doing this, I kind of feel. The bypass is done. Go. This area has taken some Alrighty, damage. so vote number two. Stay away from fire damage. You're and of course the benefit of doing this is you get your breeding ground as well, Crotic event mods. So we'll activate narrow minded. So you gotta jump over this. You wanna do a slide over here to get over that. Now this part here, you can't wait for it, but I don't bother. You can actually just Alarms. Okay, that's not what you wanna do, but <clears throat> like I was saying, you don't wanna actually wait for the lasers because that'll take too long. So you just wanna jump through, you don't wanna fall down like I just did then. You just wanna jump through using a slide attack, and you activate this panel, and you activate this panel, and that's the data. They're easy peasy, with plenty of time to spare. The data is still intact. So just to say that again, at this point, don't wait for these ones to go up or down. Just do a slide attack, jump over here, and access that. It's okay if you see it as an alarm, because that is too faster than waiting for the laser door to go down. <clears throat> and as you can see, you know, there's plenty of room for errors with these ones. <clears throat> so, you know, don't panic if you still have the alarm. It's actually, you know, no biggie whatsoever. The Corpus Alarm or the Corpus Console is actually much, much easier to hack than the Grenier ones. The target console is nearby. If you trigger the alarms now, the enemy will start destroying data. Okay, <clears throat> so I got this one. Now, this is another very easy one. Um, there are a few sort of air vents you can go across, but I usually don't really bother. So, you need to activate this console here. If you're not using Lurky or something like Ash with invisibility frame, you do need to take out the camera, which is behind us here. Sometimes, sometimes it's deactivated, sometimes it's not activated. We've got another camera here, which you need to deactivate if you're not using Lurky or Ash. And since my invisibility is nearly out, I might as well just do it anyway. <clears throat> Here we go. So there are three consoles. Again, it's pretty basic. I think the first time I did it, I was a bit more careful and I was, you know, trying to make sure I don't set up any alarm whatsoever. And you probably feel the same way the first time you do it. It will seem quite new, it's a new tile set. But after you do it literally like two to three times, 
it'll just be like any other tile set and you know chance of failure is just pretty much non-existent now there's a myth I've heard people talking about activating a lamp here and there put it this way unless you are in the vault room Activating alarms have no consequence. Obviously, once you are in the vault room, once you activate the alarm, you, you do have the consequence of you get a timer and you have to finish that vault before the timer. But if you're not in the vault room, activating alarm, don't worry about it. Alright, so there's a Corpus one, and we'll jump into the Gwyneer. So that was on Pluto, now we'll play a basic one, Mercury, and as you can probably guess, the difficulty between high level and low level is minimal when we're talking about the buy mission. Now, from experience I do see that different planets do seem to drop different event mods but at this stage exactly which planet drop which one or if there's any kind of overlap or percentage or otherwise difference is still not determined <clears throat> but put it this way I've got two thermite rounds from Pluto and I haven't got any event mods from Mercury and I've probably run each of these at least five times so hopefully that'll give you some weak statistics <coughs> so activating alarm there again, outside of the vault have no issues whatsoever. Obviously if you activate a couple of times you need to unlock a console to continue, but otherwise there's no consequence on the actual uh, vault. Alright, so here we got energy disarm so you can't really in go invisibility, but that doesn't actually matter. So, okay, so this one is quite simple, you got this thing over here which you must destroy. If it scans you, you basically gone. So we need to activate one console over here. And that'll make this little trolley thing go to the back. And we need to jump up over here. And in here. We'll need to jump on this little trolley thing in Majiggy. We want to use a slide attack to go here, activate this console, and the data is just behind here. <clears throat> Obviously, you know, to make a decent jump, you do need a decent weapon. Most of the weapons in the game can actually do this now, since I bow Prime, Taipedo, do Iker, do Zoran. They're all pretty good at doing that, and afterwards we just exit, so that's number one done. Now I'll jump to number two shortly. I'll get another energy destroyer there. Invisibility helps a little bit with regarding to you know scanning, so um, camera scan with corpus or that I guess I don't know that reverse pyramid device for good near. So it helps a bit with these missions, but overall you know it's not that important. And um, more after speed, so something like Lurky obviously travels quite fast as well, and that is something that I you know actually like to use this frame for not so much the invisibility. Invisibility is there, but it's definitely not important. It doesn't make life that much easier. Alright, so we're at console number two. The Oopsie day. Trigger the alarms now and they will start destroying the data. Okay, so this one now, this is an interesting one. So what you need to do is you need to go through one of these side doors. Either one is fine. Go down here. And the data should just be here. So benefit of this mainly is you don't actually have to worry about too many console activating before reaching the data. Now that's done, let's get out of here. So, I mean, this is actually one of the reasons I like to using the Bow Prime, because the Bow Prime, as well as horizontal traveling utility, has really good, in fact, arguably one of the best vertical traveling utilities as well. Um, the Taipedo is very similar, I suppose, but, you know, Bow Prime definitely doesn't fall too much behind. Now, I'll show a bit of the build I'm using after this. It's really not, you know, that significant <clears throat> what build you use, but I'll show it off just for completion purposes. So let's see. Now this should be the conveyor belt vault. So let's have a look. 
Yeah, this is a conveyor belt one. So what you need to do is you jump on the conveyor belt. You need to make sure you only pass these things once they are off. And obviously, got both here not helping you out. Once you're here, you want to jump all the way down to this platform over here. Oopsie, they want to throw that thing. Once you're on this platform, you want to activate this console. And once you're through the door, you get your vault right here. And that's done. Now for anyone interested, this is a build I used. Basically what I usually run with is this build over here. And I just quickly took out Vitality and put it in Narrow Minded to give that additional duration. But now looking at it, you know, it can take out Stretch, it doesn't really matter that much. Basically what you want to do is <clears throat> optimize that, you know, duration for invisibility. And just for completion sakes, so it's Bolt Prime. Now, it's basically a pretty standard build. I'm not using Spoil Strike just because I don't want to decrease that speed. But other than that, you know, it doesn't really matter that much. Alright guys, so that's my how I play Spy 2.0. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys got any suggestions that you want me to play, you know, please leave in the comments below. In the coming few weeks, I hope to do more specialized builds as well as more how I play episodes. Alright guys, cheers. See you in the next video.